What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again. Today, we are talking about the Instructor Beats Guide to Surface Area, Part 2. Today, we will be able to find the surface area of a rectangular prism. So we're going to really be focusing on using our skills from the last video about what area was and applying them to a new skill to find surface areas of rectangular prisms. Let's dive right in. All right, so for our math vocabulary, I have a split screen here so you can see a picture of a rectangular prism, right? So a rectangular prism is a three-dimensional object. It's going to have uh, length, width, and, sorry, length, width, and height, or some people call this depth. Um, and so let's learn two vocabulary words that we're going to need today. The face of a three-dimensional object is really kind of a side of a 3D shape right or a 3d object i'll say and so the face of this this would be a face right it's kind of a whole side it's a rectangle of a side the bottom would be a face right the side would be a face and then the top would also have a face so you're gonna have a face on oh that is bad handwriting the top is going to have a face that you can't see for this picture right there's going to be another side face over here on the side um, and then obviously because this is three-dimensional object we can't see it, but we know there's going to be a back right and so we're going to have a face on the back that you can't see but when we're talking about face today we're not talking about what's uh, by your nose or what your what what your nose is on we're talking about basically the side of a three-dimensional object now the edge would be just like the edge of a table, right? So it has a couple edges right here. Um, and the vertices are gonna be the corners where the lines meet. But today really we're only focusing on what a face is. So the surface area definition that we're gonna be learning today and using, right? The surface area is the total area of all the faces, okay? So all the faces of a three-dimensional object, okay? All the surface of that object, not what's inside of it, but the surface, what's on the face, right? We're going to find the total area of all of those, and that is what surface area is. Let's dive right into some steps. So your steps for finding surface area. The first one we want to do is we want to draw out each face and label the length and width. So what we're going to do, and you'll see in a second, we're actually going to kind of break apart the surf or the uh, rectangular prism and we're going to break it apart into the rectangles and squares that make it up and we're going to draw those out uh, we have a fantastic song about this that you should um, listen to after you watch this video and to help you kind of remember what the, these steps are these steps are actually found in the video then what we're going to do is we're going to find the area of each face right and so the face is actually going to be two-dimensional right because it's just a rectangle or a square for a rectangular prism which means we're going to be applying the area formula that we used last video today or in this video as well and then at the end of it we want to find the total of all of it so we are going to add all the areas together and that will tell us the total surface area of the rectangular prism the I do okay so it says what is the surface area of this prism now a couple things we need to know about the surface area right you're not because it's three-dimensional and a lot of times you're just gonna see it on a paper or computer screen you need to know right there are six sides so we have the front right here and the front is always going to be the same as the back the top okay of our rectangular prism is always going to be the same as the bottom so even though if you can't see it there should be two blue sides right and two red sides and then the sides will also always be the same so whatever the area of this side is the other side is going to be the exact same thing so what we want to do is we want to draw out all of the sides not just the ones we can see but all of them so I'm going to start with the front and the back and so when I draw this rectangle right here not only do I want to draw it I also want to label it Okay, and I'm going to draw out both the front and the back. And like I said, they're going to be the exact same rectangle. Now, the top and the front aren't always the same. So you really need to be careful about labeling it. So when I'm looking at this rectangle right here, okay, now there are three different numbers on here. But for this rectangle, oops, that's not good. I only care about two of them. I care about the length of this rectangle and the width of this rectangle. Okay, and so I see that the width of this rectangle is 4, right? The 
uh, length of this rectangle right here is going to be 5. Well, same can be said for the back. So when I use my area formula, area equals length times width, I find out that the front in the back um, area is 20 feet squared or 20 square feet, right? Now I want to do the top and the bottom. So when I draw the top rectangle, it's going to be kind of similar to the front, right? Because it's going to have the same length, but the width is going to be different. So I want to do my, I want to draw both the top and the bottom out, right? And I'm making it red so it kind of match. And so now I'm looking at only this rectangle that is on the top. Well, I see the length of that rectangle is going to be 5 still. But the width of this rectangle is not 4. This is my width right here. And I don't have a number. So I'm going to look opposite parallel. And it tells me that it's 2 feet wide, which means this is also going to be 2, right? I'm using my knowledge of rectangles to help me figure that out. Which means the uh, bottom is also going to be the same. And now I see that my area is 10 feet squared or 10 square feet. And now, okay, I have the front and the back right here. I have the top and the bottom. But there should always be six sides on a rectangular prism or a cuboid. And so now I want to draw my side. So my side's going to be a little bit smaller, right? It kind of looks like a square, although I don't know if it is or not, right? I need to make sure that I'm being really neat, although this is not a very good drawing, okay? And so right here, I can see that the width or the length, whichever one you want to make it, is two. So it's going to be two for both sides. And now this purple rectangle, this is my width of this purple rectangle. Well, I don't have a number right there. So I'm going to look opposite parallel. I see this side is four, which means this side also has to be four. Okay, and which means my area, length times width, is eight feet squared. Eight feet squared. And now I know the area of each individual side, right? I know the area of the front, the back, the top, the bottom, and the two sides. And so all I need to do is add them all together. So I know that 20 plus 20 is 40. I know 10 plus 10 is 20. I know 8 plus 8 is 16. So when I add all of these together, I'm going to get a total surface area of 76 feet squared. Okay. That means if I made an array on every side, I would need 76 squares to cover the entire outside, the surface of this prism. So th these are the steps that we use to do it to make it a little bit easier. There aren't really any shortcuts. You just need to draw out the sides and make it easy on yourself. All you're doing is basically finding the area of six different rectangles or squares and then adding them together. All right, so you go ahead and try this one out. Again, you're looking for the surface area here, okay? Um, and so I like to always do the front and the back first. That way I never forget a side. I always do it in the same order. So go ahead and pause it, draw out your sides, try to find the surface area, and then push play if you're confused or if you want to check your answer. So hopefully you just tried it out, right? And so just for this video and make it a little bit easier, okay, I'm going to kind of color code my sides. So I have my front and my back first. Okay, and I can see that they're kind of vertical. Okay, and I don't have to draw it the exact same size because I might run out of room. But I see my length for my front rectangle is 10. And then I see that the width of my front rectangle is 3, right? And because I'm only looking at this front rectangle, which means if my front is 10 uh, feet long and 3 feet wide, my back is going to be the exact same. And so my area here is going to be 30 feet squared, which means the area of my back will also be 30 feet squared. So let's look at the top now in the bottom. Okay, so the top is going to be the same as the bottom. I can only see the top right now. And so it kind of looks like a smaller rectangle or square. Okay, and so now I need to think about, okay, what is my length and my width? So I'm looking for these two sides right here for the top rectangle. Neither one of them have numbers here, which is okay. I just look opposite parallel. And so the opposite side of this rectangle is 2, which means this side will also be 2. I'm going to label that 2. I don't have a number here, but if I look opposite and parallel, I see that this is 3, which means this side will also be 3, which means the area of my top should be 6 feet square, which means the area of my bottom will also be 6 feet square. Okay. And then now I have my side rectangle. So I'm going to make this purple, okay? Make it a little bit easier to color code possibly. And I see, again, that this is a nice long one, okay? So I'm going to do my best to 
draw a nice long one right here. And I'm going to draw both sides at the same time for this. Okay. And again, I always do the same order. I always do front, back, top, bottom, side, and side. I see that the length of my purple rectangle right here, when I look opposite parallel, is 10. So this is going to be 10, and that will be 10. I see my width of this purple rectangle, or the side, is 2. So I'm going to put a 2 here and a 2 here, which makes my area 20 feet squared. And so the other side will also be 20 feet square. Now, to find the surface area, right, or how much I would need to cover the entire rectangular prism, I just need to add up all my sides, all my areas. So it's going to be 60. That's going to be 12. And that's going to be 40. So I add these together, and your answer should be 112 feet square. That is the surface area, or how much it would cover, how much... Uh, square feet it would take to cover the entire outside or surface of your rectangular prism. Hopefully this was a pretty uh, easy video for you to understand to go with. You can always check out our surface area song as a reminder or um, if you're still a little bit confused maybe the music will help you out. Please check it out Instruct Beats Official on YouTube. We would love to have you subscribe. Please follow us on Instagram at, at Instructed Beats. We appreciate you taking the time to watch our video. Instructed Beats out!